the final episode and wrap up of the Fiji trip. This is our final day's fishing before heading back to the mainland on the seaplane. Now if you'd seen any of the previous episodes, you would have seen we had some absolutely incredible conditions on the water. Apparently this is, due, this is a cycle that they have over there. First half, beautiful, glass offs, stunning weather. The second half, which we were moving into, 25 to 30 knot winds straight in the face all day. Now, 25 knots doesn't mean a whole lot when it's your final day's fishing, so it was an easy decision to punch out and head straight back to the blue holes. I mentioned that I caught my best fish of the trip um, in this episode. I did. I even got it on film. Excellent. But I have an audio issue. Now, there's wind on the mic, yes, but that's not the, that's not the issue I'm talking about. There was Ed Sheeran playing on the boat the whole fight. Now, I'm not an Ed Sheeran fan, he's not my type of music. I also would not put Ed Sheeran over a fishing video. But I think in this case, we're gonna have to roll with it. Maybe we found Big love hole coming. Right where we are. Sea perch? I think it's a Maori sea perch. They're fucking awesome. Absolutely stoked. That was to the second five minutes since I started fishing that session. You couldn't wipe the smile off my face for the rest of the day. Mary Sea Perch, an absolute stunning fish and one of my favourite fish in the ocean. Now, back to our usual programming. The thing that makes this I think it's so exciting and certainly my type of favourite fishing is it's just absolute violence. You hook a fish and you're literally one, two seconds away from it, burying you in the reef, fucking you on the edge of the gunnels. So, I've been using this 
using you know, anywhere from P4 to 60 pound line to P8 100 pound line throwing stick baits like this along the surface. Here in 10 metres of water, clear water, the fish come up. You'll see them on the surface murder your lure. And then it's a battle between who can lock up their drag quicker and whether the fish can make it home for the reef and snap you off. I grabbed the camera and I'm going to go full time cameraman after catching that Maori sea perch before. Now, between me getting seasick, the weather, trying to catch with these guys getting a strike is proving very difficult. I would tip my hat to any of the cameramen on fishing shows because this is a fucking struggle. It's not like the strike's coming one after the other either. It's gonna be five, ten, half an hour between a strike. Missed two, just when I'm changing camera settings. I've captured one, hold up. Captured one, absolute smoking. And I've got a limited battery left, so I'm gonna give this a last ditch attempt. Hopefully the boys, the rock boys at the front, get one big, fish on top water. Big jobby. Big dino trout. Boys, help me out.
Big Joby! Woo! Yeah, boy! Yeah, that's it. Is it the Big Joby? Big stig, off you go. Good fish. With the wind and the weather deteriorating further, we made the decision to head back to the resort and have one last crack at the light tackle there. Not only that, we got to enjoy our uh, final Fijian sunset for the trip. at sea 90 mil death wobbles which I thought was pretty brave considering what happens to small lures and that was the second cast of the session Can't leave him here, that's like too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's alright, we'll try and feed it if we can, yeah, otherwise, like. Yeah. Because what happens is if it's not secured, something happens, that thing becomes a missile inside, yeah, exactly, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. How amazing is the view from the seaplane? It's it's unreal. Um, 
All I could see when looking out the window is these potential fishing spots that we could have fished throughout the week. That was Nadim as well at the end that we buzzed past in the missing at sea boat. We were so close we could see the pearly whites as he waved to us. It felt like we were a metre off the water. One of the highlights of the trip. Now a few people have messaged me since I started putting up pictures and videos asking for advice and tips on their planned trip to the Yasawas. One of the things I did recommend was the seaplane for obvious reasons, as you saw. But the previous group who was there at the time of filming, they fished over there with Tristan. They caught the seaplane back. Well, the seaplane fucking crashed in a field. Apparently they lost, they lost all power in the air and had to do an emergency landing. Oh, out of control. Fortunately, everyone was unharmed. Now check this out. Check out the tail ID number on their plane. Let's rewind a little bit to my footage of getting on our plane. That's right, it was the same plane. I am now not recommending anyone take the seaplane. Don't take it, take the ferry, much safer. The fishing over there is wild. The cool part is, is most of our fish were caught in a new location, so we didn't have our guide just taking us to these places, we found these for ourselves and we barely scratched the surface. The potential over there is ridiculous. There's been plenty of good photos of fish that have uh, been posted up after we've left and I look forward to plenty more. If you're interested, obviously talk to Tristan at Missing a Sea, he'll sort you out and yeah, absolutely do it. If I had to ask myself if I'd go back, well, I reckon this might answer that question. Does anybody think? Oh, yep, yep, yep. You in, Kat? Yeah, yep, yep.